guys, welcome to Flum Club Takeover, presented by Lux Media and Bel Flum Inc. Today we have Mr. Belmont Cremas himself, Mr. Valerie. How are you today? I'm doing well, boy. Yeah. First of all, look. Okay, your camera has had me lit on the show every time. Okay, I'm, you, I'm gonna need you to email me that recipe. Okay. Um, how, how, t tell us about yourself. Well, my name is uh, Valerie Marius. Uh, I'm from uh, down Okai, okay. down south. Father from Okai, my mom from Poabina, so all southern people here. Mm -hmm. uh, grew up in Boston. Okay. Uh, yes. And then uh, after home, I had a choice, which is coming for three years old, back in college. Love us, it's paradise. So I moved down here back in 89. So I've been here ever since. So uh, I've always loved, my background is the automotive. Mm -hmm. so I was a technician first, and became an advisor, and became a manager. Was okay. The same firm for about 20 years, almost 21 years. Up until I left uh, recently, mm -hmm. back in November, to dedicate full time to my business, which is Valmas Kemas. So, it pretty much thumbs up uh, 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 career wise. And now I'm pushing the business as fast as, as far as I can. Mm -hmm. um, be out there, try to be everywhere else, you know, to, to spread the love. Right. And, you know? So, how did Valmas Kemas come about? Well, when you look, I've been, my father taught me how to do Kemas. It was my grandmother's recipe. That uh, he took, mm -hmm. which you know, uh, mm -hmm. she showed her her office, or uh, showed him how to do the kemas, and he showed me about twenty five plus years ago. Uh, my grandma is still there, actually, one hundred three years old, just turned last uh, wow. two weeks ago. Pop That's passed away about three years ago, so you know, so it's up in heaven mm -hmm. from somewhere. But uh, so when I looked around uh, the area looking for kemas, I used to do the precious Cam de V or Ponce Crema, mm -hmm. Cuba, which was close but nowhere near what ours came as was. Look around and saying, nobody's doing cremas, why not? We have a lot of people that would enjoy the, the taste of cremas, from Haiti or Caribbeans. All different Caribbean islands have their own version of mm -hmm. our cremas. So there's a space uh, to do this, put it out there. Right. So I undertook the uh, challenge to get it uh, certified, lab tested and everything else. And uh, to get it out uh, in the market, which is what uh, I've been doing for the past three and a half, almost four years now. So it's been in the market for four years. Officially debuted there about three and a half years ago. Yeah, three and a half years. Yeah. But how long did it take you to actually um, get it processed, tested, bottled up, and well, I started and since I knew the process of making the cremas already, and I wanted to make it a little bit uh, more flexible, so people can use it in different ways mm -hmm. instead of just drinking it like we regularly do. People usually drink cremas with cakes and right. regular, regular uh, things. So I wanted to expand upon that so people can make cocktails and different things out of it. Right. So what I want to do is to break down the different uh, the flavors of cremas. We have some of them that are more uh, almond and coconut, or more coconut mm -hmm. and almond, or a mixture of the two. But as you know, some people may be uh, allergic to coconut or almond. Oh, right. So mixing the two doesn't quite win it. So I broke it down to make sure that everybody, everybody can enjoy their separate things. And I've noticed that by doing a lot of test, testings, that some people may not like, like coconut, and when I offer them almond, oh, just for joy. So they still get to enjoy mm -hmm. cremas in their own way. So, and then also the coconut, also. Right, right. don't like coconut, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I explained why not more, put more flavors into it. So like a banana, coffee, everybody in the world enjoys coffee, chocolate is worldwide, mm -hmm. and other the Caribbean, Latin American food right. that we enjoy, and even envy. Taste. The taste is complex. So people's taste may be different than mine and yours, depending right. on where you're from, what your background is. Mm. You have different tastes. People like hazelnut from like, we like pistachio. Right. We may not like pistachio, but other people love it. Pineapple and so on. So that's what I'm about to get a little bit of something of our main culture, which is came out, expand upon the world, wherever you come from, you can enjoy our fruits and, and our taste. So you have 23 flavors, I believe? 20... I have 21 flavors at this time right now. I'm always expanding to see what, you know, more, get more cultures mm -hmm. included. Some areas, maybe some local areas, for example, in Miami, they love, they love guava. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We love guava, which is why I have. Right. Okay. Cubans love, mm -hmm. love guava, Spanish people love guava. I'm working on it. A flavor for that, so make sure that a lot more people enjoy things that are close to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure you tested more than 21 flavors, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So uh, just they just didn't make it. I just pick those. I, I'll, I'll choose to keep and remove some in and out at okay. times. I have more than that, but I just keep so. It what are some flavors that you you have tested, but you're you said mm -mm, it's not 
Well, for example, cherry. Cherry really? is yeah, cherry is good, but cherry is worldwide. Everything has a cherry base. Any because people love cherries. Yeah, but every medicine you take tastes like cherry. Ah, so it's like a, it's a common thing. You can do a cherry a sour cherry, a cherry sour, which is different than your normal cherry. Mm -hmm. But I do have that back. back. I have strawberry and I have raspberry, but uh, you know, those I can move a little bit in and out depending on the time of the year. You know, okay. but uh, you know, there's a lot more. We started basically with the design of the label, which me and my brother, which is uh, uh, the, yeah, the mm -hmm. actual label idea. We started doing a sketch. He's a designer. He loves this this mm -hmm. from way back then. So he gave my idea. He put it together. We back and forth. And then we came up with that and then had it to, to send to my marketing people that designed my, my things. And then for a good like three or four or five months, we worked on that design for us mm -hmm. before we so, went out. I've noticed that they have majority, not all, but majority of the Caribbean flags um, in your logo. Mm -hmm. Would you? And I know that the Caribbean, throughout the Caribbean, there are different varies of Caymans, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So I've had this conversation actually yesterday mm -hmm. um, with a few friends because we had eggnog and mm -hmm. we're saying, you know, eggnog is basically the Haitian version of cremas. So my question for you is, what's the difference between our cremas, our traditional cremas, and everybody else's cremas? Well, they, they, they put their little touches into them and where they from. Where they, for example, in Puerto Rico, they have coquito. Yeah. They emphasize a lot on the cinnamon. The probably is. More cinnamon, very cinnamon, more and nutmeg, like and mm -hmm. the rum is even even loaded with rum. And some some Puerto Ricans make it with egg, some do it without egg. So in, in Dominican Republic, they have a bunch of crema, and Venezuela have a bunch of crema too, which is more crema, not so much coconut. There's, you don't find much coconut there. And for size, yeah. coconut. Coconut is really Caribbean. If you take a coconut, you take a it's, palm tree, right? All right, even tropical. So I concentrate on that, so that I enhance that to be there. Um, in Caras, where they have a creme duty, I used to drink that when I used to look for creme in the markets. That was as close as I could get, but it's not quite there yet. Uh, but uh, the coconut is what makes the difference. You actually taste the coconut. Mm -hmm. And then that makes, uh, well, our regular creme have cinnamon and nutmeg mm -hmm. too. You do pick that up in the background, the cinnamon and nutmeg, but you still know there's coconut in there, prevalent, a little bit of the uh, almond in there too. Mm -hmm. But uh, I make mine different than those. I regret the departure from that. I want people to taste the coconut itself. Not only that, there's a lot of cocktails in Martinez that are coconut based. Yeah. So when you do that, you expand what you can do with the product. So there's like, I have uh, about eight or nine different cocktails you can make with the coconut by itself. And I have a list of it uh, on my website on uh, www.vamascoma.com. Mm -hmm. You can go and pick that up. I'm going to do the same thing for almond, same thing for coffee. And banana, so I'm gonna break down the ingredients that you want to make the cocktails and martinis with, and then use that product to complete mm -hmm. it instead of having to bundle up with two right. different tastes. So, yeah. Velmas Cremas, your, your last name is not Velmas, no, it's my right. use, right? Yeah, so wh wh where does the name come from? Oh, Velmas, uh, uh, came from a combination of Val, which is part of my first mm -hmm. name, and Mas for Cremas. Velmas is Cremas. Ah! So, <laughs> Uh, this whole time, because I, I kept asking, I'm like, Velmas, Velmas, is this name Velmas? No, it's Valerie. So where's the rest of Velmas, Velmas coming from? That makes sense. I am so a... We did a contest, actually, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, to pick out the name. Mm -hmm. I had called it a different name before, and then we came back to me and my brother. We mm -hmm. now down to Velmas, which is what we wanted, but we mm -hmm. had a lot of people on Facebook participate in the contest to see which name they would pick. 90% chose Valmas, mm -hmm. which is what we picked to begin with, but we right. get everybody else to participate. And so, then, you know. did your, before she passed, mm -hmm. rest in peace, um, did your grandmother have My grandmother still here, my, my father passed away. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, yeah, I'm no sorry. Yeah. Did your, do your grandmother still have a say in, um, in the company business, whether it's the flavors or the logos and stuff like that? No, the logo is everything else. It's, right. it's my, my doing. The recipe came from her. Right. Uh, the recipe was the one mixed with the banana, actually. Banana and coconut. Mm -hmm. That was her recipe. I took it and I made my own. I re restructured the recipe with a different uh, alcohol. Hers was with uh, rum, with whiskey, and so on, which I made it with that. But I took that and I do mine with, with, with uh, vodka. But the reason for that is that the vodka is neutral. It doesn't okay. affect the taste of the product, the ingredient you put in. You, so you get to taste the coconut more. even more, which is more enhancement. So mm -hmm. I took mine and I did that with, uh, with a 
uh, vodka. The reason people always say, why does it look so white? Well, vodka is clear. Mm-hmm, it's clear. Rum is a little brownish. Dark. So a lot of times you see the brownish color it affects the color mm-hmm. of the product. And with the vodka, a lot of a lot more cocktails are based with vodka. Martini based with vodka. Now you people used to say martini with gin. Right, so right. right martini yeah. is gin. But if you look around here, or uh, anywhere else, vodka is mostly what they use to make any martinis. Mm-hmm. So vodka is based on a lot of different cocktails, which is one more reason that I choose vodka. So how does your grandmother feel um, about the company, towards the company? Oh, how does she feel? She loves it. She's uh, she's part of, part of it in every way. Um, just the other day at her 103rd uh, anniversary, we had some chemists there. I bought some coffee chemists mm-hmm. for her. I would celebrate with her. She loves, she loves it. She's on my, uh, part of her picture is on my uh, logo on the gift box that I have. Okay. And also it's going to be on my stand that I have, uh, you know, the other stores. Mm-hmm. So we have the Vama stand, which we, you know, find the product. When you enter a store, you find it right up front. Mm-hmm. I plan on doing that. We're going to have her picture in the store of the product there. Too. Okay. So, so she's um, very part of it. So, Pumunyo, Kia, Miami, or South Florida, you mem kikajuan yo on shop, right? Or is it right now expanding all like, all over the nations or Setuju still in Florida? Well, it's not when Miami, Dade, I mean Dade, Broward and Palm Beach. Okay. We're gonna ship you boo. So on the website where you know what check you where location could you need you're gonna ship you boo New York. Non importe l'état que qu'accepte qu'on ship à quoi on a ship nous légalement. So we're gonna n'importe aux états unis en Californie, en Californie. Jersey, Pennsylvania, you can come and deal with your ship with you automatically. Okay. I mean, that's a lot of work. Website right. For you. But Florida, Marshy, Cuba, the uh, next quarter, which is starting in April, Orlando, Tampa, Jacksonville. So, we're going to continue to do this. We're going to set up shop to expand food journal on this. After we're going to finish with them, we're going to continue for three months in that area. Then I'm going to take my business also mm-hmm. to New York. That. New York is my next market. Okay. The biggest market. Yeah, I so. feel like yeah, that's going to be your yeah. next. There's a lot of nations North up there and a lot of yeah. yeah. Massachusetts. I'm from Boston. I'm mm-hmm. from Boston. So Massachusetts right there to New York, Massachusetts, mm-hmm. New Jersey, all this area. The Northeast. Attack that one. When I'm in New York, I'm in New York market. Right, right, right. Those areas, yeah. So, yeah. how do you feel about working with um, women in your industry? Oh, all my life I've had to uh, work with women. <laughs> I have uh, I've my son, which is the oldest. I have two daughters. My mom, my grandma. You know, uh, I've had to break off with women. Uh, actually, um, women are basically the backbone of everything that we do. I owe my life and my being again. to women. Yes. It was just the International Women Day the other day. I could not be here without oh, mom and grandma and everybody else in, in the family. And my ex wife, of course, which I'm not, you know, I'm divorced now. It made it possible for me to have the beautiful kids that, uh, that I have. So I celebrate them all the time. Women is, is definitely, actually, a lot of ideas, uh, a lot of uh, the writings and everything that I do on my website. I've had ladies, friends of mine involved in writing and giving me ideas to come out because I don't want to any ideas, I never claim them. So I'm always acting, you know, uh, seeking advice, women's perspective. Because remember, Kremas is really the target market. It's 25 to about 45, 50. Yeah. Women, people older and younger drink it, but down 21. But my target market is women. So I, I really, really concentrate on getting a woman's view of the product because that's the mostly going to consume mm-hmm, the majority. Mm-hmm. So, definitely. Okay. Um, do you actually have women as your taste testers? Or? All the time. I have people, I have women doing tasting for me. Okay. Days. And they, oh, definitely. My, my first people I have tasting my product is women. Okay. Okay. When I have to approve it first. Mm, right, right, right. <laughs> so, you so know, how do you feel yeah. that um, women should be more recognized? Or how do you feel that, well, yeah, I said that. <laughs> uh, in in uh, overall? Yeah, yeah, overall. In well, general. women tend to, in general, uh, stay back and don't wanna, not want to be in the, the limelight. Put yourself, put yourself out in the limelight. Be exposed mm-hmm. and be confident about the things that you do. Because men tend to portray the confidence. Women tend to stay in the background, but you have to get out there and get what you deserve and speak for it. Mm-hmm. You don't let anybody speak for you. Speak for yourself. Your voice is what matters. So I encourage women to do that. My, my girls, uh, tell them first, education first. Make sure you can stand on your own. Don't depend on anybody else. Make sure you can do it on your own, then you find your 
what you like, what not, if you want to. Okay. Um, so make sure as an individual, you can stand on your own and be proud of what you do. So I, I comment that. Okay. Yeah. So being that you have kids um, mm -hmm. and you are an, an H, a Haitian elder who's, who's, who's have experienced wisdom, do you practice the Laka Lake on Ligbis very strongly in your household? Like I first, of course, yeah. They they call the Iglesia. So they call uh, see the Spirit uh -huh. School in University of uh, Florida and I mean, FSU that is. So still okay. Two girls are. Um, they, this is part of their lives. They still go to church every Sunday. Uh -huh. One of my daughters, the older one, picked up the younger one. So the one is off campus, one off campus, and they go to church every Sunday. Okay. Yeah. So that's always always the case. So um, while they're, they're growing up, were you really really strict and adamant about them being either a nurse, a doctor? engineer or lawyer or you just actually gave them the options to pick whatever they wanted to do. I gave them the liberty to choose what they what what moves them basically. Uh, as long as they have that as a background and I remind them all the time, all my kids, my son, my two girls, it's not by accident, it's hard work. Uh, what you put in, what you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can choose, you know, of course we want them to be as best as whatever they want to be. But I've never chosen their path. Uh, one of my daughters was going to go for mechanical engineering. She just changed computational science to work on that. The other one's doing mechanical engineering at FS school now. So, you know, doctors and things, they may have chosen that because that's what they see uh -huh. on TV and everything all the time. My young, the one that's doing the mechanical engineering wanted to be dentist before that, or doctor, they right. younger. But as they grow, they change path and I support them all the way. Okay, oh. so what are some words or tips that you can actually give to um, the Haitian parents now? Because there are some who are so still adamant about, you know, the careers that I've told you, and they don't believe in anything else, which are kind of blocking, I feel as if like, they're blocking, you know, the blessings of the child, because maybe that's not the child's calling. Mm -hmm. So what are some tips that you can actually give to uh, parents or new parents who are raising kids and, um, or how to raise, like, what should they do when it comes to careers and helping them or guiding them? Well, it's to have an open mind is the uh, number one thing. Uh, the person will excel at what they, you know, you, you'll see them excel naturally in what they want, what they want to do. You know, help them achieve that, basically. You can put some guidelines, but you cannot put a career up on somebody. Because you're a doctor, I mean, you have to grow your doctor, to be an artist. To develop to be the best artist in the world, you know. So you look for that that they are, uh, you know, uh, pretty good at, and you help them in that direction. If that's what they want to. Okay. You know, so you gotta be open-minded. There's no strict. There's no monopoly. You know, that's the monopoly on ideas. So what they really feel that moves them. Mm -hmm. Of course, you always remind them to you know make sure that they're independent and that they can stand on their own. That's the one thing because you were born alone, you will go alone in life. It's great, it's great to have a partner, but if, if you make sure that you leave on the stem of your own, that's always been that one's still there for the kids, for the kids. Make okay. sure that independence is what matters. Right, yeah. right. So I know that this is a family business right now, right? right. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, with, with your kids um, following what they want to do, mm -hmm. who, who will be the one to take over the business when it's. <laughs> well, it's all theirs. It's all theirs at <laughs> the end. So, they'll. Cooperate and get together. So now, let's say, God forbid, let's say that's not what they want to do. Let's say they don't want to do entrepreneurship. They don't want to get into the business. What what, what happens? Uh, well, I have family over. I have okay. Brothers. I have, I'm one of four brothers. Oh, okay. But yeah, I'm yeah, four. You're good. You're set. So it's, it's, uh, it's a family affair. That's it. That includes the whole family. Okay. You know, it's not uh, just the kids, it's mm -hmm. the whole family in the end. So if that's what they want to do, that's, what, that's fine with me. It's just not their calling. If it is, it'll be right there when you call. And yeah. Amen. So Bless you yeah. because yeah. I know. <laughs> it would be nice to take it the next right. step. Because I know they'll, they'll improve upon what I do. Mm -hmm. They always have. They give me ideas. So I take a lot of ideas from them. So I know they'll improve, but they make it even better. Mm -hmm. They might take it to a different level. So, you know, I can only get so far. And, and, right. So, yeah. so how do you feel... Um, how do you feel about keeping up with your social media when it comes to young entrepreneurs and business and marketing? Well, it's almost like a full time job. Uh, almost, <laughs> or it is. <laughs> it's a full time job. Well, yeah, it's this. Uh, you have to be up to date. You have to know what's up. You know, you have to try to be as many places as you can while still doing your job. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, they have a lot, 
there's a lot of things involved in your business. Commitments that you make to people, do that, and then uh, there's production involved, there's marketing involved, there's ideas, there's people proposing the thing, there's goodwill, charity, there's things you want to be part of. There's a lot of different movements uh, in the business. So media, the social media is a very important part of it because mm-hmm. that's how you can reach a lot more people. I can be talking to you now and somebody in New York sees us. Right. That must be nice, you know? So that's very important too. You know? Okay. So as you're coming up with your um, your business, I know there are a lot of people who are doubting you and a lot of people who, who said, why, why why did you quit your job? Why did you do that? You must be an idiot to do that, to, to, to try to start this off from the scratch. It's not going to go anywhere. You know how many people, people that can just make cream out themselves? I know while going through that, you know, there are some times you probably may have doubted yourself may have said, you know what, maybe I did made a, I made a mistake. So what, what are some things that you put yourselves or some things that you said to yourself so that you can um, keep on going and produce this wonderful product and share it with us? Well, the uh, I've been doing it uh, while I'm working uh, for the past two and a half years. Okay. So I've looked into it. And of course, uh, Kremas has made a video. A lot of people make that kind of video on Kremas. And, mm-hmm. and I'm aware of that. But uh, why isn't it out there? There's a whole world out there that's not experiencing, experiencing right. what we have to mm-hmm. And then um, for something that's uh, Haitian, you know, there's Bob McCoo, of course, the namesake in the, in the, in the world as far as uh, rum is concerned, and our core product. When you look around, I say there's no chemist anywhere in the market. We've got about 23 million people here. Mm-hmm. If 10 million enjoy it, why not? It's made for everybody. It's a Haitian product. They follow it against them. Flag is right in the middle, right down the middle, right center, where it belongs. But it's something that could be enjoyed by a lot more people. And all the Caribbeans have a lot of uh, cultures in our Caribbean Latin America have the same type of background food that we offer. Right. Manioc, they have it, uh, you know, in Latin America. You can uh-huh. eat a lot of manioc. Mm-hmm. They have, they call it a different name, but they eat all the stuff. Right. The Jamaicans eat that. It's all, you know, they have a lot of things that we share in culture. So my thing was, you know what? There's a lot of Haitians here too. So I'm gonna do it and then spread it around. Right. You know. So, so um, I know that by that way, <clears throat> there's no way to lose. I guess right. you have doubt. People tell you it's a sweet drink, this and that. But you know what? There's a lot of sweet taste and sweet people that like sweet. So right. It's a dessert type drink. And so you can make cocktails. You spend on that. So if somebody gives you an old block. Why well, it's a sweet drink? Yes, it is. But you can order it down with this and that and make cocktail out of this. So it's a sweet drink, part of a drink. You know what I mean? So cocktails always are bitters and a syrup. Simple right. syrup, so sweet, sour, you can do different things with it. But the basis to all that. You know, so. um, also, I, I feel like, in my opinion, that you are contributing a lot um, in our culture. You are doing it for the culture. And I, we, it, it, this is expression, doing it for the culture, as in you're, you're, you're spreading the awareness of our culture. Yeah. And I say this because we have a lot to offer. Haiti itself, we have a lot. You know, our soil is rich. We have a lot to offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to walk in the in the um, liquor store and to only find Baba Baba highlighted as just that one drink, mm-hmm. that one liquor, you know, to represent Haiti or to represent Haitians, it's 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 kind of sad. It saddens me sometimes because I know we have a lot more. A lot more to offer. So to be the one to say, well, Cremas is one of them, you know. Let me bottle this up and then put it in the store and let them know that it's not just Baba Cool. We drink a lot of different liquors. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, but I that. We have all kinds of things. Right, like exactly. Yeah. So I, I thank you. You know, I, I love I love people who are actually truly, truly um doing it for the culture. Mm-hmm. Truly um spreading their awareness. So I, I always say this, I always say this. It's one thing to talk about uh, the culture and, and what we have to offer, and then it's another thing to actually Put it into works and show it the world what we have to offer, yeah. you know, and, and and share it and spread what what we have. That was my main motivation to be able to spread mm-hmm. a little bit of hate right. to the world and proud so and they could doing it right, the right way. So that's why I took time to, to get it out there. And you can see, almost four years ago, it's mm-hmm. taking time, steady oh. step to get it wider and wider. But it's 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 working. I remember I came home. Um, with a sample, because I, I always bring a sample home, a sample or two, mm-hmm. home with me. <laughs> and um, I have an American friend, and I said, yo, you have to try this cremas. He was like, what, what, what's a cremas? What, what's that? So he tried it. He's like, yo, I need a bottle. Like, I need me some cremas. <laughs> so he always he always seemed like, hey, you got some cremas? So it was like the fact that I can actually share this and, you know, 
people who who aren't American could could just fall in love with the product and they don't even know what's in it. They don't care to know what's in it. It's just they're just in love with it and to yeah. know that you know this came from Haiti. So. And it, it has a multiplying effect. They tell their friends about it and tell their friends. Right. You'll be amazed how many times when I'm doing tasting. Well, this just came out. I heard about it. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can enjoy it. And they usually enjoy it. They can pick up the bottle. Right there and then. So I love to see that. When I'm doing tasting, I just look at the eyes. Mm-hmm. The eyes don't lie. Right away, I know. Okay. Gotcha. Right. You know, so. so this is some chemistry. Let me see which one that we have here. Right. Like mm. coconut? That one's almond. Wow. You know, you know. I always say that the almond. I don't know if you. What what, what area do you stay in? Uh, Pimper Pines. Okay, so do you, do you have Haitian? Ba- are there Haitian bakeries in Pimper Pines? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so yeah. right. So have you had ever had like a G Corsol or G Guinaja mm-hmm. or something like that? It tastes just like for me mm-hmm. where I'm from in Miami. Um, all the Haitian bakeries like their G's kind of taste the same, mm-hmm. but it's it, it gives me the G Guinaja or G mm-hmm. Papai taste when I drink it. That okay. I feel like almond almond and coconut are my two favorite. Well, the coconuts out there, the almond is going to be in the stores at the end of the month. Actually, the end of the month, it's going to be out in all the stores. I'm going to give you a bottle as soon as it comes out. So, um, could you t- actually tell us uh, where can we find, how many stores um, down here in South Florida have have the product? In uh, Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach, you got about 110 stores. Uh, so, that moves back and forth, it grows a little bit. Um, so, we anywhere in Miami, you can go to the website, mm-hmm. choose where you live, and then it's okay. Here. And that's mm-hmm. going to be changing more because I have to keep adding more stores over there, which is a good for them. I go back to my to get them, they need more stores in there. Mm-hmm. And I send the list as well. So, yeah, it's just doing well so far. Thank you. Thank so, you so much. And also, thank you again for, for coming. Could you please tell us um, Bel Plum? When you hear Bel Plum, and I know you have a lot of Bel Plums in your, <laughs> in your family. So, your by grandmother Bel being <laughs> the main one. Yeah. Yes. You know, the recipe is from her. So when you hear um, Bell Plum, what, what comes to mind? Bell Plum to me is uh, an expression of all the beautiful things that uh, women are part of and reflect, uh, you know, as far as principles. Uh, education is from uh, women that usually educates a lot. The guys are part of it. Uh, upbringing, uh, civil affair, all the different things in the mannerism and the culture are done by you know, think about it. We are just co cool bystanders sometimes. Okay, we give our input mm-hmm. on that. But really, the women are this is that builds the culture of the community. So, Belfon uh, is what I see when I see a woman out there. Every woman is, is, is unique and beautiful and in and out. So, you know, it's uh, in my uh, my grandmother had eight eight girls and one boy. Wow. I've been surrounded by beautiful Belfons mm-hmm. all my life. So, it, that's what I see. It's, it's just uh, positive and, and encouraging uh, to, to, to take the next step. So it's, 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 it's just a beautiful thing. You know? Every culture, people tend to look at breath from thinking that it's just outside beauty. But uh, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. I may look beautiful to somebody else and ugly to somebody else. So it is in the eyes of the beholder. As far as I'm concerned, woman is a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. That's, that's, that's first. Remember, the men were first. You know, so the one that created everything that we have here. I owe my life to women. My mom, grandma, and everybody else. Without them, who would I be? Thank you. We, we guys plant the seeds, but women right. love everything okay. else. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, also, where the websites we can find your Instagram and everything, where can we find Valmas Cremas? Valmas is on the website at www.valmascremas.com. Instagram is Valmas Kemas one and uh, Valmas at World's Best Kemas on Twitter and uh, Valmas Kemas on Facebook. We are actually in about 110 stores in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach. We're also online. You can get, get your bottle online. It's shipped to you everywhere in the U.S. Not internationally yet because the laws are different for each, each country. So we're not going to go there yet. But eventually, we'll, we'll make it there. Thank you. Um, shout out to, to you. Thank you for providing us with the drinks. Because I swear I can have, you know, usually, traditionally, I can only have cremas around the holidays. But because of you, whenever I, I want to have cremas, I can just go to the store and purchase a bottle of cremas. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. thank you again. And thank you for allowing our guests that comes to taste your
Ma a pleasure. Shout out to Lux Media and Bethel Mac <laughs> right. to host me here. Thank you. It's a beautiful thing. You guys are doing a beautiful job out there. Thank you. Thank Keep you. Keep an eye on everything that you do. I'm always looking. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. So, guys, thank you for viewing um, one of our special editions on Funkfield Takeover. Uh, like us, follow us, subscribe, everything. The links will be down below. Um, follow me at I am Karma. That's Karma with C, C A R M A underscore. And uh, thank you. Bisous. Bisous.